I died and was now in the presence of this divine male being and I was rejected. Here's my story. It happened in the summer of 1996. At the time, I was 20 years old and was on the way to a public festival near a swimming lake. I was with my then boyfriend and some other people. It was a nice warm summer evening around 10 p.m. My boyfriend and I had been dining in a restaurant. After the meal, he asked me what kind of strange red dots were on my neck. I knew I had allergies since my earliest childhood, but I never have had any skin symptoms. We walked about 200 meters towards the festival when I noticed some light-headedness. I fainted when we arrived at the festival entrance. I can remember blackness in front of my eyes and feeling that my legs gave way. I was still able to reach for my boyfriend's jacket to hold myself up. He turned and saw that my eyes turned backwards. Another friend came from behind and caught me. They carried me outside on the street, put me on the ground and called an ambulance. I didn't notice anything of this. Suddenly I heard buzzing, followed by a hushed plop noise. I left my body through an opening in my head. This happened automatically without any action of my own. I was surrounded in a black void that was somewhat uncomfortable. I needed to get my bearings and was aware that even though I couldn't see my body anymore, I was still myself with all my feelings, character traits, and thinking. Having or not having a body was irrelevant. I felt good, light, and free. I was pure consciousness. I had a clear mind, a strong will, and a crystal clear perception. I also had additional abilities that are not possible in earthly life. I was surrounded by nothing but black infinity. This blackness never felt dark, scary, or empty. To the contrary, I was feeling better and better. I was more myself as ever before, and I knew that my body was down on earth. I continued to move up ever farther from it. I also wondered how I knew this. I knew that I peeled off my earthly body like a pullover that you pull off before going to bed. I peeled off my role that I had been playing in this earthly life like a role in a movie. And now I was again myself, and this was a very liberating sensation. The void was simply infinite. There was no time and no space as we know them here on Earth. But still, everything was completely normal and profoundly familiar. I started to move through this infinite black space. I could beam myself literally within this infinity with my thoughts. I only needed to think, I want to go over there. And I was there. I was flying here and there through the black universe. I also could change my own size. Sometimes I made myself small. Sometimes I expanded myself close to infinity. That was a great feeling, and I tried more and more things. I enjoyed the vastness and infinity. I felt indescribably well, safe and endlessly free. This was pure freedom and simply the most natural thing of the world, as if I never had been doing anything else. And I knew, that's my home, my original being, the original existence of all of us, the home of all our souls. It's from here that I come, and it's here that I belong. We all come from here, and we will all come back here. A deeply familiar sensation of home and belonging pervaded me completely. I was one with everything. There are no earthly words giving me the possibility to describe this deeply anchored knowledge, this memory, and this beloved feeling of home. This beaming back and forth with the ease of my thoughts, the expansion, but also resting at a place and basking in the comfortable sensation, continued for quite a while, and during which I was aware that I still continued to move up and up. If I had to compare it with worldly specifications, I would compare it with a 45-degree angle. I could play in this infinite space with my moves, but I was also directed and continually pulled up, like on an autopilot. At about mid-height, a soft music came from the depths of the black universe. At first, it was far away and could hardly be perceived, but it got my interest. The sounds were nearing fast and became louder until they finally reached and permeated myself. 
Never before had I heard such a music. It was very rhythmic, melodic, and ethereal. Initially, I found the music rather strange, but the more the sounds and the rhythm permeated me, the more I became a part of the music and was merging with it. I started to move with the music. I was moving in a way I never before had been moving in accordance with music. I felt magnificent, and this state could have been going on forever. I was one with the music and was dancing through the universe. This phase continued for a good while until the music slowly faded. It was as if the music had only been localized in a certain layer, and now I was leaving this sphere by moving further up. I could no longer influence my way of moving. I couldn't determine my speed, as I was on on autopilot and still moving upwards. I felt great anticipation that I was nearing my destination. It was a feeling like just before reaching the finishing line, but it was as if the memory of my present life was fading the more I moved away from my body. The ride slowed down, and suddenly the ride stopped. What? I was frustrated because I wanted to continue. I knew that beyond this border was fulfillment. It was the home of our soul, my beloved home, my origin, everything that I am, the place of pure bliss, simply everything. Several times I wanted to beam myself beyond the barrier, but to no avail. While I struggled with this, from the depths of the universe a voice came. At first it sounded muted and far away, but it approached very fast and became louder until it was close by and resounded from all sides around and through me. It was a male voice, clear and distinct, powerful and determining. The voice said, Bia, here you can't continue. Here is your stop. I wondered who was talking to me, but I didn't think to ask the voice. I also wondered how this voice knew my nickname. But instead of asking, I replied, But I want to. I was astonished about wanting to assert my will in front of this powerful presence. The voice said again, You cannot stay. You have to go back. I was deeply shocked, yet the words burst out, Wild horses couldn't drag me there. And I got frightened about my words. But in this moment, I really felt this way. The idea to turn around, go back into my old life now that home was so near, was shattering. I can't say that I actually saw what came next in the way we see here on Earth with human eyes. It was more of an inner sight. I saw my boyfriend holding up my legs and calling my name, Bia, Bia. Suddenly, I was inside of him, in his chest and felt his despair, but also all his love he was feeling for me. This feeling was incredible and overwhelming. Never before or after I had experienced such a feeling. It was a feeling of such a love. All his love through all ages and the total love of the universe merged in one feeling. And the voice said to me, He loves you and is waiting for you. I decided, He will get over it and can continue his life without me. Again, I was scared about the harshness of my decision. Then my parents were shown to my inner eye, and the voice said, Your parents need you, and you have to take care of them. I thought about my mother, and felt that she would need time to overcome my loss, but I also was optimistic that she would understand my decision. And so I answered, With time she will also overcome this, and both of them will get along without me. My decision was clear. I wanted to get beyond the border. To get back home, the voice answered calmly and insistingly, No, you have to go back. You still have to complete your work. Mm -hmm. This I couldn't understand. What work? What kind of fancy talk is this? What kind of duties? Sorry for disillusionment. We are not enlightened when we leave our body, but we are still having all facets of our identity. My thoughts had certainly been heard, but unfortunately, no answer came back. The sentence, You still have to fulfill your work, was still reverberating for a while, and I wondered what was meant by this. It was like a mission given to me. As I didn't get an answer, and I still continued a few times to get over the invisible border, but to no avail. 
There was a kind of push, like being pushed back with a kind of compressed air, and was then speeding directly down towards earth and my body. A deeply shattering sensation went through myself. I felt rejected and lost. At half height, where before the beautiful music had been, I fervently wished the music would show up again. I would have given anything to merge again with those sounds. But I rapidly continued towards the ground. Slowly, I realized that I really had to go back to my old life. The ride abruptly slowed down, and I knew that I was just above my body. Finally, I dove back into my body. It was dark, but a different darkness as in the infinity of the universe. It was dark, and I felt small and lost. At the same time, it was extremely narrow. I felt like being wedged into a sausage, and I thought, is this so narrow because I'm too thin? I answered myself, it's always narrow, even if your width is one meter. I felt this tightness like a strong physical pain. I also had the most awful sensation of homesickness you can imagine, and a total despair. Now I will have to continue this life until its end. This idea left me quite depressive. I didn't know this kind of feelings from my previous life and haven't had them since in the same extent. But in that moment, it was very bad, and I knew if I couldn't bring myself to counteract this depressive feeling with positive ideas, then I might remain depressive for the rest of my life. This seemed a horrible mental image. What an emotional roller coaster shortly before my home was in hand's reach, and I had been in anticipation of heaven. And now I was so depressed and sad as never before. A solution was needed. I couldn't stay that way. So I tried to pick up some courage. I really scanned my feelings for positive steps until I found some. Memories of my present life showed up that generated optimism. Until now, my life had been quite okay. It even had been beautiful. And then I thought about my friend, his love and his fear that I had been feeling up there, and I started to worry about him. I wanted to tell him, hey, don't worry about me. I'm here and I feel wonderful. This feeling motivated me. Suddenly, the feeling of depression gave way. I was happy about this and was now ready to wake up. After this, a moment of silence followed, a complete silence. Then I heard like a swooshing in my ears. This was the first real physical sensation in an earthly sense. I now knew that my soul was again completely connected to my body. I could literally feel when this fusion happened. The noise in my ears became louder. I sensed that my biological circuit was back. Then the noise was dying away, and I could distinctly hear the noises of the festivity. The memory of the event was still present, and now the memory of the previous situation came back, that I had fainted. My eyes were still closed, but I knew who was sitting at my side. It was a friend of mine. She held my hand. I said, S, did I talk or move in strange way? Because during my experience, I had been talking and dancing. I was scared I might have behaved in a strange way during my blackout. He said, no, you were simply lying there. This reassured me. I said, I just had a fancy dream. There was a voice talking to me and a music that moved me a lot. She said, yes, yes, let yourself wake up completely. My boyfriend, seeing that I was awake, let my legs falling. They flopped down on the hard ground. It seems that he was under shock, and some of his friends were leading him away. Generally, there was a great relief that I was awake. I knew that the ambulance was there and that the paramedics were on the way to my place. I wanted to avoid that. I felt fine. I considered the whole confusion concerning myself as unpleasant. So I was sitting up. I noticed that I felt totally clear, more clear than ever before, as if a kind of purification, clarification had happened. My friends were not happy that I was sitting up, but I didn't care. So I got up completely, what caused the others to start panicking. Now my boyfriend came back also and wanted to stabilize me. I hardly could convince him that I really felt fine. I even felt great. 
I wanted to attend the festivity and revel, to celebrate my great condition, my newly gained lucidity, my experience. But this wouldn't happen. You better take her home, the friends of my boyfriend advised. So he took me at my home. On the way, I was looking through the open car window into the night sky, and I said, I've just been up there. 